Hey, what's going on? It's Go, JJ, Go. <sighs> Sorry, that's not just happening. Okay. <laughs> I'm here with Chanel Lee, uh, Mar I want to say marketing guru, but really it's a marketing expertise. I know that in Houston, we have so many universities in Houston. We have University of Houston and the whole campus system. We have TSU, University of St. Thomas. Right. We have Rice University. And marketing is in the top five of these majors. So a lot of the students here in this amazing Houston, Texas, get marketing degrees. Maybe you thought about getting a marketing degree. Maybe you have somebody in your family that has gotten a marketing marketing degree, but has not made a successful marketing career. I have Chanel Lee here, and she is the uh, co-owner, president, founder, all yeah, the th yeah. all the titles. Yeah. Every important title of Cold Black, uh, every important title you can think of. It's a marketing firm that has been putting in work in Houston, Texas. So we want to talk to her a little bit about her journey, Chanel. So marketing. Yeah. When people say marketing, what is under that umbrella? Because a lot of people say, oh, I'm into marketing. Like, what does that mean? Yeah, thank you for having me, JJ. Oh, for sure. Um, marketing is a lot of things. Um, marketing is branding, is what your, what your online presence looks like, what it feels like. Marketing is any visual that people see, you know, the clothes that we wear, the brand just being on it, that's marketing. You're selling something, yeah, right? Yeah, so you're selling something, you're, you're recognizing a brand with some type of imagery or message or tone, even just Singles, those are marketing. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm are, loving you it. You already know who that is. Yeah, that's McDonald's. I don't even yeah. have to finish it. And y'all was already, y'all was already with me. Right. Uh, so uh, everything when um, we hear or feel something and we associate it with a product, an idea, a movement, that's marketing. That's marketing. So, yeah. so if. Is that simple? Uh, tell me why everybody ain't cut to do it. If, if it's just like, <laughs> because they could say, oh, I'm gonna make me up a little beat and then that's gonna make people think about Nike. Yeah. Or if I say, just do it, or like people, if they see an orange swoosh, they already yeah, know what already that know. what that is. Somebody along the lines have told you every time you see this, it's associated with something. Yeah. Um, it seems so simple. Tell me why everybody can't do it. I think, JJ, honestly, the, the response to that is everybody can do it because we all have a bit of creativity. It's very subjective. I think where the difference is in being a marketing professional is the execution. Oh my gosh, so execution, the, yes. The execution of yeah. the idea, the, the planning, the understanding, of people and where they are and where to place it, that is where marketing professionals come in. You can have a great idea. You could come up with the next jingle. Right. But if it doesn't go anywhere, then it's, it's you know, it's just stuck with you. Oh, I, I love that because most of the creatives in the land, um, ideas for days, notebooks full of ideas, notes yeah. on your phone full yeah. of ideas. Uh, mm -hmm. If I tell you right now to come up with something um, creative, I could say, may I uh, sell this sweatshirt? Or I could say, you know, yeah. what would make somebody want to uh, go to your hair salon versus everybody else uh, down this street? Right. And people probably could say, well, I know how to get people in. Yeah. Um, but again, re result driven and, and how you hit a target, right? Exactly. Tell me about, um, in the course of 10 years, I know you started when you was in sixth grade or fifth grade, I, I feel you. Uh, so, you know what I'm saying, something like that, something, yeah, like, something that. like that. So, uh, over a decade uh, of, of being in marketing, tell me some of the companies, uh, companies or projects you've been a part of. Okay, so I started out, I worked at Chick-fil-A from 16 to 21. You know what, that's how I know you were God. Like, that's how yeah, I know you yeah. blessed because anybody that worked at Chick-fil-A, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's just different. People at Chick-fil-A, well, after the pandemic and the stimulus checks is different. Yeah. They hiring different people. Yeah, yeah. But before, before those checks, uh, everybody at Chick-fil-A just seemed like they were on the track to be phenomenal adults, right? right. Don't, didn't it seem like it? it? I, I, I do think that um, even just working behind the counter, the company culture really set me up professionally. In Man, kind of way. for real. So I was I was working at Chick-fil-A uh, 15 to 21 and, you know, went up the ranks to management position and I actually went to University of North Texas and didn't go me and green. Okay. And and, um, Is that I, UNT? UNT. Yeah. Okay, UNT. Yeah. yeah. And I went to a career fair, and there was an agency that had a booth. And I met with the ladies. I was like a sophomore in college, and they okay. were like, "Oh, well, our agency only does." And they were a marketing agency. Okay. Um, they were like, "We only do internships for credit, so you need to either be like a junior, senior level 
and, and they were like, just keep in touch with us over the years and we'll try to get you into an internship. Right. I followed up with them about a year and a half later and they were like, come on, they put me on the McDonald's account. Wait a minute, the the multi-billion dollar McDonald's account? Yeah, yeah, so I was I was an intern for the Dallas DFW region, right. um, McDonald's marketing team. That's and, huge. And um, I did that for a year, and as soon as I finished, they were like, do you, you want the job? And I was like, yeah, of course. I, I, so. I want to slow down for a bit. So uh, she started off, like, first of all, even from her youth, she surrounded herself with just co company culture that would win. Yeah. Uh, then you you uh, sought out opportunities, um, going to job fairs, going yeah. like, you know, uh, networking, you sought yeah. out opportunities. Then you followed up. Right. Like you didn't just say, this is a closed door, let me move around. Then you followed up. Got got the opportunity mm -hmm. because of your past experience and because of you following up because of your diligence. You got the opportunity, yeah. and the cra the the next step. Once you get in the door, you stayed in the door. Uh, how did you stay in the door? How did you go from, hey, we're taking a chance on you uh, uh, on this billion dollar, multi billion dollar yeah. project and company to, hey, we want you to stay on the team. Like yeah. what like what were some skill sets that you put forth? I stayed I stayed with McDonald's for seven years. They okay. moved me around the country a couple times. I moved up to Detroit. I worked on the whole state of Michigan. They moved what? me to Houston. That's how I ended up here. Now, but Detroit Big Macs, they different from down south. I the know. The whole menu. The, the whole, whole menu, menu is different. different. So I was learning markets and people and even the co-ops, the owners, the corporations Love and it. all these different places and how they operate. Incredible. But really, what set me apart is that I really pushed the creative limits on the teams that I was on. Love that. I was typically the youngest. Um, I was one of few Minority. black people on the mm -hmm. team. Yeah, people of color on the team. And um, I, I think I just came off really confident about my ideas. Okay. And I also had people surrounding me that wanted to see my ideas win. And people really got behind them when I was passionate about it. So I presented things at meetings like when I first moved to Houston, they, they were, they challenged me to come up with a way to make Houston's culture connect with the brand. Okay. So I was like, okay. That was your Houston, task? This was my task. McDonald's say, hey. <laughs> so let me let me tell That's you what wild. we did. So <laughs> they was like, we, we really want to make Houston culture connect with the brand because we were really trying to come up with a way with how do people feel McDonald's outside of the restaurant. Right. And so I was like, you know what? I'm, I was fairly new to Houston, maybe eight months here or so. And I was like, Houston has a lot of culture. Like, you know, that swang and bang culture, that trill, you know, that right. just that Southern slow moving. Um, and I was like, I feel like there's a way for us to bring a campaign to life that looks like that. Right. So I, I brainstormed with the creative team in Dallas and we came up with a series of headlines for billboards. And one of them was keep breakfast trill. <laughs> <laughs> and it went up like I had to I sit in a it. meeting with all of these McDonald's owners, and I was like, "This is the this is what we want to go to market." And you and convinced them to let let I us mean, say keep breakfast trail. Just imagine sitting in a meeting with like McDonald's owners that have been owners for sixty years, and they're and don't even know what trail is. And they're like, um, "What does trail mean?" And I'm like, "It's a combination of true and real." So we're saying keep breakfast true and real. And they were like, oh, we love it. Billboards went up. Cause they, cause they just, cause yeah. you, you knew how to explain it in a corporate way. <laughs> <laughs> I've been like, you, trail is a lifestyle. Yeah. So, so, I okay. mean, we, we did, I, I did do some of that, that cultural relevancy yeah. and, and make it fit to what we really meant. But it was, it also has meaning behind it. It does. And it was, you know, it needed to still feel true to McDonald's brand too. So. Love that. So, so let me, let me ask you. So, um, very young, you got, these incredible opportunities because of work ethic, because of uh, just uh, your, um, the qualities that, that that both were learned and that some of the natural qualities you had. What are some other career highlights that you had? Um, I think working on uh, Howard Hughes, so I left McDonald's okay. uh, for two years before I started Code Black. And um, with them, I they were really struggling with the team and how they were executing. Just okay. on a higher level, this was taking me out of a creative execution type of space okay. and really into a people management space and how do you motivate people to come up with really good marketing campaigns and advertising campaigns and execute them on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. And at that point, I really got to exercise my leadership skills, so I grew the account. Um, you know, doubled the revenue. We yeah. worked on some really, they gave us some really big production projects Love that. where I really got to do some really big shoots. Love it. Um, so I think that was also a moment that I kind of got to experience a different side of marketing and, and how that works from a leadership perspective. Speaking of a uh, uh, leadership perspective, uh, you are the leader of every category in Code Black. I know you got a whole team of awesomeness. <laughs> Let me know what kind of marketing, what, what is offered at Code Black? Is it just, is it product? Is it like, what kind of marketing do you offer 
as services for those that are watching that, yeah. that want to tap into your services. Yeah, yeah, and I, I'm not by myself. You know, my business partner, Kia Brown, she's the president of, of communications. Shout so out, Kia, we, what's up? Yeah, we, we make a great team in how we balance, you know, the, the messaging and then the media relations side of it. Got so. It. Um, some things that we do, we're a full service creative marketing and PR agency. So we do everything from branding, rebranding to um, really large commercial productions to right. web development to, you know, crisis management. A lot of companies Lord. don't think about, you know, once you put something out there, you got to stand on that. You got to maintain it. Yeah. Think about H&M with the issue they had with the ads, with the kid, with the monkey on the shirt. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there are certain things in marketing. You're going to take some risk and you have to be able to mitigate that risk with, with some type of course right. of action for a plan. Let me ask you, so someone watching has a bakery, someone watching has a beauty salon, someone watching has uh, a dog walking service, someone, they, they're not black. <laughs> somebody somebody watching has, like is a uh, music artist, somebody watching is a writer, somebody is a, is a chef. Yeah. Uh, they say, hey, I, uh, is this how it works? They say, hey, I'm Chef JJ, I can cook. I, all my friends say it's bussing. Um, yeah. I, I wanna expand and grow how much money I make. You take people like that and you create ways for them to be um, seen, known, and also for them to grow revenue. Right, so at the, at the end of the day, anything that you're doing in marketing, you want to equate this back to some form of growth. Yeah. So depending on what your goal is, if you say, I just want to grow my following, then we need to hit the digital presence really, really hard. It depends on the goal. If, yeah, if you say, I, I need to triple my revenue this year because maybe I have investors looking at me or mm -hmm. I want to be able to get my brand in Target or want, you know, just different goals, then, then there are different strategies to reach those different goals. Love that. Do you all do... Uh... Is it is this more the digital marketing side? Do you all do like press kits, EPKs? Like, you all, do you all do like um, maybe somebody already has something popping? They're like, hey, I want you to package it so I could push it out. You do that too. So we do. We have we have a really creative team that can do some great design work. We Got try it. to stay away from one-off projects that do not have an end goal. I got you, I try to just master a lane. Y'all try to like, yeah. let's, let's master we, something. We wanna do it all. We wanna be able to take you from what is your idea, can we creatively execute that, and then let's push it and then let's report on what the that performance is so that we can also see that we're doing a good job. So you can journey and, and not exactly. just not just like, let me let me plug and play. And also y'all y'all about saying, let me partner with you to take you to the next level. Right, right. That is so awesome. How can we find your services, find out, uh, any type of workshops, any, any kind of, any, any informationals that y'all might have or, or being able just to see what uh, what is offered at your yeah. company. Yeah, we do a really cool monthly newsletter that we really just started um, back in November. And cool. it's, it's very insightful. We do industry tips. You Love may hear that. from myself or Kia or anybody on our team on there. So y'all giving away game. Y'all yeah, giving the game away. We give away. game on there. We, um, it's, it's really cool. It's, it, it's creative. You can kind of see uh, some of our creative capabilities there too. Love that. Um, you can find us on social media at codeblack.co. That's C-O-D-E-B-L-K dot C-O. And that's also our website, codeblack.co. I love it. Hey, that's that's Chanel Lee. JJ, go, JJ, go. Stay, hey, you have been talented and having something for too long to not get with the experts to take it to the next level. We'll, we'll see you soon. Contact Chanel and we out.